Hi guys, I'm Matt and this is my brother Johnny and this is our entry for the Rock Club Plywood Challenge. So the challenge was set by the guys over the Modern Maker podcast. So if you haven't checked them out already, we've popped their links in the description below. We're starting a little bit later than we wanted to. The challenge is due for the 31st of this month and it's currently the 19th. So we've got just over a week to get the project done, get the video done. What? The 19th, we've got 12-ish days. Mate, I've, got, I've literally got to go on holiday. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, I, my, my flight's in like two hours. John, see ya. What, the challenge, what about the challenge? Do it on your own. Go get cracking then. Looks like I'm doing this one by myself then. I mean, he could have helped me get the plywood off the back of the trap before he left. After struggling for a couple of minutes, I went and grabbed this dolly, which allowed me to take it into the back garden a lot more easily. As you've probably seen in the video thumbnail, our submission for the plywood challenge is going to be an end grain side table. I made a really quick card template which I used to draw around onto the plywood. this table I'm going to be stacking a load of plywood layers together and using a router to perfectly copy every layer, so it's really important that the first one is right. I use the bandsaw, table saw and jigsaw to get close to the line and then refine the shape with lots and lots of sanding. Where's that brother of mine when you need him? I rough cut a second layer from the plywood sheet and then use double sided tape to hold them together. I could then use this flush trim bit in the router to make an exact copy. Now that I have two layers finished, it makes it a lot easier to work out how I can tessellate this awkward shape on the remaining plywood. I managed to get eight full layers in total this way. Once all the lines are done, I can use a jigsaw to cut them out. I'm giving myself a little more excess than normal as the jigsaw can sometimes not produce the straightest of cuts. I'll use the bandsaw in a minute to get closer to my line and this will also make it a little bit easier on the router bit. I'm using the same double sided tape method as I did earlier on to make sure that the layers don't move around whilst I'm routing. Once all eight pieces are flushed up, I can separate them and remove the tape and give them a quick sanding. I'll use wood glue and brad nails to join the layers together, making sure that I don't put any nails through the two outside layers. I'll use clamps to hold these on and leave overnight to dry. By doing it this way and routing each layer before gluing them, it saves a lot of time with the belt sander later on, as all of the excess is gone and it will just be a case of smoothing each surface out. Now even with me carefully laying out my cuts earlier on, the design of this table does produce some offcuts. However, the next part of the build will utilise some of these. Before I glued the last layer of plywood on, I traced the shape of the top section onto one of these offcuts. I wanted the table to remain relatively narrow at the base, but get wider up at the top. These extra layers will provide more width, which will make this table a whole lot more useful. I will add a curved transition, which will also show off the different plywood layers, and these were attached in exactly the same way, glue, brad nails, and trimmed flush with the router. I decided to move everything outside as the workshop was getting covered in dust. 
I used a flat disc in the angle grinder to start blending this curve together, and I made sure to put some tape down to make sure that I didn't damage the areas either side of this curve. I then used a drum sander attachment in a drill to smooth the curve out. I could then start on the final sanding with my belt and random orbit sanders. Now, there's only one thing worse than sanding, and that's watching a video of yourself sanding whilst recording a voiceover. So now I'm sitting here wondering what my brother Johnny might be up to right about now. Yeah, me too. <sighs> it's alright for some, isn't it? Anyway, let's finish this. I brushed a couple of layers of polyurethane on to finish the table, and then it was time to test it out. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. The thicker base makes it really stable, and the wider top perfectly fits my laptop. The curved section also brings the work surface closer to me, which is really comfortable, and the design means my legs have a ton of room underneath. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed this project. All that's left for me now is to wait for Johnny to get back. Until next time, guys.